Hello wonderful human beings, Sheldon Evans here and in this week's video we're talking about composition mistakes that all photographers make at some point along their journey. Whether you're a new photographer or you've been doing this forever, you've probably made some of these mistakes. I recently had a shoot with my friend Gemma and I made some of these mistakes on purpose so that I could give you guys some examples of what they look like and how you can go about avoiding them. I'm definitely not a fan of rules at all but these are just some things to be mindful about at your next photo shoot to help you achieve more attractive compositions and keep your images looking peachy. To put your mind at ease, even as a professional photographer, I make these mistakes all the time. So to get right into it, mistake number one is not doing background checks. No, I'm not talking about screening your model for a possible criminal background, even though that is advised. I mean looking at what is behind your subject and how certain shapes intersect with your subject's face and body. Try avoid having lines going through your subject because these can be quite distracting to the viewer and appear as if these lines are splitting your subject. So to avoid this, try moving around to different positions or using a wider aperture to blur out your background or you can use these lines to your advantage and actually make them a part of your composition. Use them as an element within your image as you can see it's forming part of the frame or you can use one of the most powerful composition techniques there is and that is creating a frame within a frame. As you can see these lines form a frame around Gemma and help lead your eye towards her. Before we move on to the next tip, I just want to take a second to thank Squarespace for supporting this channel and sponsoring this week's video. They helped me set up my website without touching a single line of code. So to start your free trial, you can visit this link and use offer code SHELDON at checkout to get 10% off of your first order. So whether you need a domain name, a website or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. More on that later because we've got some more tips to get to. One of the most common mistakes a lot of us make is not giving our subject enough breathing room within the frame. If you have your subject facing off to one edge of the frame and they're also closer to that edge of the frame, it can make your image feel a little boxed in and give off a sense of claustrophobia. This happens because as the viewer, we don't know what's outside of the frame. So the edge of the frame acts as a sort of barrier or wall between our subject and the exterior of the image. To fix this, simply turn your model in towards the image or recompose your shot so that your model is facing the edge of the frame with more space. On the other end of the scale is giving your subject too much space or too much headroom. This happens when you crop too high and leave too much space above your subject's head. Either move in a little closer or adjust your composition and place your subject along one of the third lines to give your image a little more sense of balance. Next, we're talking about amputations. Cropping and framing people within your shot can be quite difficult, especially with all the parts of the human body that you can chop off. Cropping your image at the joints of your subject can look very unnatural and look as though your subject has been amputated. Just like I spoke about earlier by not giving your subject enough room at the edge of the frame, it leaves the viewer's mind up to determine what is outside of that frame. So if you crop at someone's hand, there may or may not be a hand outside of that image. To fix this, you can try shooting wider and including more of your subject in the frame, or you can crop at some of the safe zones, like the areas between joints and mid-abdomen. If you're shooting a headshot, include your subject's shoulders in the image as well to avoid your subject just looking like a floating head. Don't crop too far down your subject's forehead either, or you'll end up giving them a bad haircut. There's a million different ways you can crop your image, and each image is different, so it's essential that you experiment with your crop and see what works for your image. With all that being said, remember these are just guidelines. While there are some rules in photography, often the photographs that break those rules are the ones that are most effective. First, understand your rules, then break them. So take everything I've said in this video with a grain of salt and go out and shoot. There's no point in learning all of this without putting it into practice. It's essential that you analyze your own work and don't be afraid to point out the mistakes that you've made. We all make mistakes, we're human. But that's it for this video and again if you guys want to set up your own website for your own photography, you can start your free trial at this link and use offer code SHELDON at checkout to get 10% off of your first order. Go get yourself a website and get your work noticed. Thank you guys so so much for watching, I really do appreciate it and I love every single one of your faces. If you found any of the info in this video useful and you liked the video, don't forget to like the video. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you know when I release a new tutorial. Thanks to my friends Suhail and Gemma for helping me make this video. If you want to see more of Suhail's epic video work, head on over to the link in the description. And if you want to see more of Gemma, you can check her out on Instagram and the link to that is also in the description. But as always, I shall see you guys in the next video. Cheers.